welcome to this episode of Grip Muscle Spotlight. Hey everyone, my name is Tikito and thank you so much for the support in the last video. I got almost 100 subscribers from my first video. I would have never expected that. So thank you very much for showing your support and welcome to this new episode of Rib Muscle Spotlight. And uh, this week we will talk about extensors. Um, I will split this into two videos for reasons I will explain. There are two types of extensors in your forearms and one type will just work on your fingers and insert into them and the other type is inserting into the wrist and extending the wrist. So for reasons of training and a lot of other things and they have different training methods and different tips for using them and so on, I will split this into two parts but the second part will come shortly, I promise. And this week will be about the extensors that work and use the fingers. So let's speak about the basic function of the extensors, which is really easily explained. If you see my hands like this, I extend the fingers, including the thumb. All five fingers have their extensors. This is the motion they do. This. Or even with a closed hand, this. So, before we talk about the basic anatomy, um, the four fingers have different extensor muscles than the thumb. So we will talk about the four fingers first, and then we'll talk about the thumb. So, again, I have colored my hands for you to show you where the extensors are. So, if you have a good look, this is basically where the extensor muscles for the four fingers go along. But uh, first of all, let's talk about how to find them. So if you take a look at your own hands and you extend the finger, you can feel here and you will feel the tendon. Place your finger there and move on the back of your hand. This is an extensor tendon. You have those in each finger and in the index finger you will find two of these. Just explore your own body and see if you can find them. And even in the thumb, like here, if you extend really hard, you can see and feel them. This is why I've drawn them. Now, to find your extensors in your lower arm, you can place your hand like this. And then you have two places on your elbow. The medial part, which is close to your body, and the lateral part, which is away from your body. I've drawn a circle around it. And the lateral part is where the extensors come from. So if you place it like this and look into a mirror, this is not where they come from, this is where they come from. So. Now there's a big muscle group on the outer part, which is the brachioradialis. We're not going to talk about that today. And these are extensors as well, who work the wrist, but we will talk about them in the next video. So the extensors we talk about in this video are in the middle of your arm. You see this? So just take your arm, place it like this, and the middle of your arm, here are your extensors. If you want to find them while placing the arm on a table, again, they're basically on the back of your arm in the middle. So the biggest of your forearm extensors and finger extensors is the extensor digitorum communis, that's the Latin name for it, the big guy in blue here, who goes all the way up here, starts on the outer elbow, and as you can see here, it forms tendons, and then those tendons go into each of the four fingers except the thumb, like so, and make this movement. Now, as you can see, there are two other extensor muscles, one for the small finger, a little finger, and one for the index finger. And this is also the reason when you place your hand on the table, why your little finger is a much stronger extensor as your ring finger. Little finger can be extended much more because he has two muscles that lift him as the same for the index finger. So the other two guys here are the extensor digiti minimi. This is Latin for extensor of the small finger. It starts on the outer elbow as well and accompanies the big guy 
until it forms a tendon as well here and goes to the little finger. And the extensor indices, extensor of the index finger, starts in the middle of your forearm on uh, the bone or between the bones. Um, there is a small membrane where it comes from, not from here, but from the middle. And then it goes all the way up here, forms a tendon and goes into your index finger. That is also the reason why your index finger is really strong, because it has two very strong muscles that are connected in a tendon. And if you um, remember the exercise from my workout video, where we make this uh, walking extend extensors, it becomes really obvious why pushing with your little finger is much, much easier if it, instead of just trying to push with your ring finger. This is really hard, but if you take your little finger, you can push up. Really good. Talk about the extensors of your thumb next. You remember this is the part where your extensors of your fingers were. Now on the part above here are your extensors of your thumb. Now you have to imagine these drawings deep down below other muscles. There's the brachioradialis group above these, which I will speak about in a later video. So just imagine these deeper than the layer of other muscles above them. Okay? Good. And let's get started. The big guy above the others is the abductor pollicis longus. And abductor means that it abducts your hand, so if you have your hand in this direction, it makes this movement. And as you can see from my drawing, the abductor inserts down here into your wrist, and that is why if it starts from above here and you tighten it, it abducts your hand. It's also connected to the bones of your thumb, so it doesn't only abduct your hand, but also your thumb. So the movement of this would be this. Okay? So, the other two muscles here are the extensors of your thumb. This is the extensor pollicis longus, and this is the extensor pollicis brevis. And it's basically just Latin for long extensor of your thumb and short extensor of your thumb. Brevis is short, longus is long. And what these two do? Let's follow them along. They go up here. The long one is longer than the other, obviously, and it goes into the dip joint of your thumb. So what it does, it extends your thumb in a straight motion, like this, straight extension. And the short one, it inserts into your MCP joint of your thumb. So it also extends the thumb, but you don't need a straight thumb for extension can basically just do this movement because it goes here. So these two are responsible for extension of your thumb like this and like this and more often than not they work together and also they work together with the abductor. So in a motion like this or if you try to make your thumbs up all of them are engaged. One last thing I want to encourage you about is explore your hand and try to find these tendons and try to find them in the motion that I explained to you because exploring your hand and your body will help you understanding the functions of them. So to find the longus just make your thumb like this and pull back really hard and if you then look here you can see it on my hand and you can feel it on your own here's the tendon. Move around and see how it moves below your fingers. Same is true for the brevis, just bend your thumb and move it back and you should see the tendon move. And of course the same is true for the abductor. You are using your extensor muscles to point at something, like so. It's also used for everyone's favorite hand gesture. I'm so sorry for showing this to you. You also use it for shoving stuff away, like these nasty water bottles. And if you turn pages in your favorite book, you use your extensor muscles. I've prepared this for you. 
Now you also use the extensor muscles when thumbs up or when giving a pimp slap in this totally not staged action video. Okay, now for the exercises. If you are doing grip sports or weightlifting or calisthenics or any other sport like climbing where you do a lot of gripping and a lot of flexor work, it is very important that you train your extensors as well. You can imagine this as a balance, because for everything you grip, you want to extend your fingers again and loosen the grip. Now if you only train flexors all the time, your hands will be super strong at gripping, but there is a muscle imbalance because your extensors are weak. <laughs> now imagine grabbing something, but you're too weak to let go. <laughs> well, that's not the case, but um, if you don't train your extensors, you will get pain in the tendons at some point in your training. So it's very, very important that you see the two of them as a balance and try to hold a balance between extensors and flexors. Then you will not get injured and then you will have a healthy forearm. So train these equally and um, especially if you have never trained extensors before, I recommend that you start today with the exercises I will show you later in this video. If you have absolutely zero equipment to train your extensors, the best way is by doing walking extensors like this. You can see this exercise in my full workout video and by doing explosive extensors, like so. Closing and opening your hand. The downside of this movement is that you don't train your thumb as good as you could and that's why I think extensor bands are the superior exercise or training your extensors but we look at a few other ways to train them as well and have fun. The most effective way to train your extensors dynamically is with extensor bands and you can find these on the internet, you can buy them. They are basically just rubber bands in different resistance strengths. So red is the hardest and white is the lowest. But you can also just use regular rubber bands you can buy in your uh, local shopping mall. There are different companies who produce them um, and I've tried several and they are all equally good. So just go for what is best in your country. Easiest way to use the extensor bands if you had surgery or you are in rehab and have extensor problems is by taking the lowest resistance band like the white one and you place it around your fingertips. And before we talk about training with them dynamically, I want to show you a good rehab exercise for your fingers. So you just leave them around your fingers and now you lift odd objects in your household, like this cup, place them somewhere, extend your fingers again and take something else. And basically you set the timer to maybe 5 minutes and you just go around, lift odd objects and place them somewhere else while the extensor band stays around your finger. And this will give you a really really good exercise without uh, overtraining yourself because you have these periods where you're not extending them when you're searching for a new object. So this is really really good after surgery. Now to use them for proper weight training you start with the highest resistance you can find. So for example the yellow band and then you place it around your fingertips like this and then you try to pump out 10 reps, like so. Extend your fingers really hard. Okay. And after you have pumped out 10 reps, you have to see if this was too easy. If it was too easy for you, you have to start with the higher progressions, with maybe the blue bands. And if it was just about right, you finish. You have maybe 15 to 30 seconds rest. And then you take the next lower progression, like after yellow, this is green for me, and then you pump out another 10 reps. And the faster you go, the better this will train your muscles. So don't try to go slow, but try to be explosive with your extensor strength. This will train your muscles faster. Okay? 
So this is called uh, extensor pyramid. Okay, so you start with the highest, then pump out 10 reps, half a minute rest, take the next lower one, and continue until you are through. So what do you do if the red band is um, too easy for you? I'll show you a trick. You just take two bands. Huh? Here we go. <laughs> High resistance. Have fun with these. Let me show you really quick the do-it-yourself variant. You just take normal rubber bands out of your local store and you can use them just as effectively. Holding to a pull-up bar in a chin-up grip is already a good way to train your extensors to an extent, but a better way is to shift them like so. And this can be done if you have a rotating bar in a climbing gym, for example. This will also give a very good workout to them. If you have no extensor bands and no pull-up bar, a backpack is a good alternative to train your extensors and I'll show you how. You just pack the backpack with a bottle of water or with dumbbells or any other weights if you have them, but let's suppose you have none. You just take a bottle of water or two or three, depending on your strength or none, if you're very weak, and put them in the backpack. Now you close the backpack and most backpacks have this small handle up here. And you just shove your fingers below this with your palm facing down and thumb as well and then just lift it and hold for as long as you can. If you can hold this 30 seconds you need more weight so once you achieve 30 seconds increase the weight until you have to give up below 30 seconds. This is a very good extensor training. Show you a close up on how this looks. Fingers under the handle and just lift. You can also attach your elbow to your body, so it's not an upper body strength exercise, but really an extensor exercise. There are two good ways to stretch the extensors of your fingers. And the first one is you extend your hand, make sure to um, lock out your elbow, like this and your palm is facing to your body, like this. And then you grab the whole fingers, including the thumb with the other hand, like this, grab really hard, and then just pull your hand to your body. And you should feel a really good stretch in the whole lower arm when you do this, like so. And make sure to lock out your elbow, not like this, this is the correct form. And hold this for up to 30 seconds. Now the second way to train them is uh, by placing the back of your hand on a table, like this, like so, palm is facing upwards, elbow is locked out again, you can do this with both hands, and then just lean back with the upper body, just slightly lean back. You can do this statically by holding, or you can do this dynamically by going back and forth. And this is a really, really intense stretch for your extensors. So make sure to go slow on this one, so that you will not injure yourself. And hold this again for up to 30 seconds, or if you're doing it dynamically, do 10 reps. And then you can, if you want, switch the direction like this. Or even doing it to the front like this. This week's episode of Grip Muscle Spotlight is at an end and thank you very, very much for watching, for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't yet, please consider it. It would be very much appreciated by me. And next time we'll talk about extensors again, but about the extensors of the wrist. These guys. You need them for many, many things. So, looking forward to the next episode. And have a great day. Goodbye.